Hi everyone, I'm Tran Bowie. Thank you for joining us today. Succeeding in school is more than just about making A's. We are learning that a child's emotional well-being is just as important. And it's awesome because now schools are also seeing that. And joining me now is Julia Burnath. She is the president of the Fulton County School Board, District 7. Julia, thank you so much for joining us today. I know that it's been even though we've been out of school, you've been really busy just trying to help us like stay on track and do the teleschooling and trying to figure out what comes next. Thank you, Tran. It, it has been uh, definitely a learning experience for children and adults. <laughs> That's right. So I want to start with, when do you think you found your voice? You know, I was one of those kids in school who I was sort of in the middle. I wanted to be with the popular kids, but I had a lot of empathy for the kids that were not as popular. And I probably didn't find my voice until high school. Okay. And I, 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 I didn't really um, feel the effects of anyone. And um, it took me realizing that in order to get engaged, you've got to be willing to put yourself out there and come up with ideas and you know try to let them get traction in order for you to step up. And if you are picked, you've got to do the job. Yes, and I think that's the thing with uh, Be The Voice is trying to teach children to not just be bystanders because we can have that empathy and we can want to do something, but it takes a lot of courage to actually step up and do something. So I want to talk about your engagement and your involvement with Be The Voice. Great. Well, I first learned about Be The Voice through Debbie, mm -hmm. who came to my Rotary Club, Sandy Springs Rotary Club, to, to speak, and I was so impressed with what they were doing and the fact that they were lending the expertise to the children so that the children understood what bullying looked like, mm -hmm. how to combat it. A lot of people will see something happening. But somebody will make an, an offhanded comment that everybody laughs at, but it's really not funny. And um, what Be The Voice is doing is helping children to understand when that happens, why it's not okay, how to step forward and halt the action from there forward and not become the brunt of being bullied yourself. So as throughout this um, interview, we're going to pop up um, comments and questions. So if you do have any questions for Julia, now's a good time to ask her. Uh, so Julia, I want to talk more about this social um, emotional learning. Um, I knew what it was, I'd heard about it, but I really didn't understand it and how it's actually being implemented in our schools. How is the school district putting that into the schools and how does that actually work? Technology has been such a wonderful benefit as we've seen when we've all been sequestered at home. Right. But it also provides for real-time comments and once something's out there, you can't take it back. Right. And I think that it's hard for kids to learn that um, young folks are think that they're you know invincible that nothing they can do can harm them and the actions that are taken particularly on social media can really be hurtful without sometimes without people even realizing that and what our school district has done has tried to focus more on the social and emotional needs of our students we've seen a rise in attempted suicides and we've try to enact as we're learning about how the internet is impacting us all, learn about developing policies that will help protect children and adults from cyberbullying. So how does that look in the school district? Are the, are the board members being trained, teachers being trained, administrators, how does that look and how is it incorporated into a regular school day? It starts with the children and getting the children, well, actually, it's a combination because a school has to understand what the voice offers and they have to be willing to take on the training of their teachers so then they can help train a cadre of students and it's almost a train the trainer model that once the core group of students are trained, 
then they can go out and share with their peers with the reinforcement of the principal and the teachers in showing that, yes, this is a good thing and this is something we all need to learn about and something we all need to practice. And are most of the schools that you work with embracing this idea? There are many of our schools that are doing that. Yes, at elementary, middle, and high school, they're all doing it. It looks a little different for each one of our schools. Uh, one of the things that I love about Be The Voice is that they are recognizing that at different stages of development, children look to different levels of um, role models. It starts with parents and teachers. Getting to middle school is anything but parents and teachers. <laughs> I, I hear <laughs> You know, in high school, it's it still is focused more on peers. Mm -hmm. And I think they do have a little more respect for teachers at that point. And hopefully some of them are coming out of thinking their parents are the dumbest people on earth. Right. But it's the Be The Voice has been able to incorporate that. So they've looked to people who have already graduated from individual schools to give testimonials or role models that kids would look to athletes um, and musicians to come and, and talk about things. And if, you know, somebody's favorite role model is a UGA football player and that football player is saying this is a good thing, well, they're going to look at it in a different light. No, I, I'm glad you pointed that out because that I do like that about Be The Voice is it's not just here's the plan, you you deal with it. It specifically targets certain um, areas and different age groups and what is effective. And if it's not effective, then there is a way to change that. But I do, I, you're right. Um, at different age levels, the people who influence you um, will change. So earlier you were talking about cyberbullying. Kim Cooper has a question. What happens when cyberbullying is reported in schools? The Our school district has a hotline that uh, students or parents or teachers can call into if they feel like something is wrong, whether it is cyberbullying or other um, fraud or, or abuse that's happening. We also have um, a program that if kids are feeling isolated and need to reach out to someone, they can call that number, or text that number and a licensed professional will call them back and try to help get them directed to where they need assistance. But for bullying, even though cyberbullying doesn't take place in school, if it's reported to the school district, we have um, staff members that will follow up on those issues. That's another thing that has changed over time. It used to be that if something happened and it was not on school grounds, well, or not on the bus, then it was up to the parents or local enforcement officers to follow up on it. But cyberbullying, because it's probably taking place on our machines mm -hmm. and it's often happening among our students or even with a student on a teacher um, that, or teacher on a student, right? You know, maybe unintentionally that we do have, um, everybody has to report these issues out and the principal, I believe it's the principal that organizes um, how this happens, how, how they follow up on things. And I, from what I've seen, um, because my children go to Crab Apple Middle School and we were at Mountain Park as well, and then we have Roswell High, um, the administration is on it. Like anytime there's, you know, whether it's intentional or not, they're on it. We, we get the messages. So I feel like it does become a community um, a community that works together if there is a problem. Um, so we talk about cyberbullying. We probably hear about that the most. Um, it seems to be bullying, any kind of bullying. Uh, kids talk about that. But there are a lot of other issues that we need to address. If we, And that depends on the different um, age levels, too. So you have, you know, drugs and depression and, you know, suicide. So what are some of the main things that we are seeing right now? All that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. Drugs, attempted suicides, depression is a huge issue right now. And I think a lot of people don't recognize what the signs of depression are. And we are very blessed in Fulton County to have a lot of community partners that have stepped in to help support the social and emotional needs of our students and our teachers. Um, we've got a great staff with Chris Matthews, who is directing student support services 
he's been able to partner with folks like Summit Counseling Center um, and others across the district and refer students there. We have outside organizations, again, like Summit Counseling Center, who actually come into our schools and work with our students. We have, um, the school district has um, added 10 additional counselors mm. to try to specifically look at social and emotional well-being for our students. So we've, we're trying to attack it on a various, various levels. We've got the in-school counselor, we've got the folks coming in from outside, and then we've got more regional um, areas where we can bring in folks if needed. Are you always looking for more people, more mental health specialists to, to volunteer their services? Absolutely. And ways to partner. There are a lot of after school programs that are happening, particularly in elementary and middle school that may not be athletically related mm -hmm. where students can come in if parents are working and students need a place to go, a safe place to go after school to get their homework done and maybe experience some uh, enrichment activities that they haven't done. And that's a great place for folks to come and volunteer. There's a group in the Sandy Springs area called the Sandy Springs Education Force, and they're working with Sandy Springs Middle School at an after school all stars program where it's a five day a week program, two hours a day, where one hour is focused on studies, one hour is focused on enrichment. And during those enrichment times, uh, health professionals, Psychologists, counselors are welcome to come in to share their expertise. Also, many of our high schools and middle schools have uh, programs where they bring in community leaders to talk with identified students in a group setting during their lunch hour. And it's, wow. it can be called Link with a Leader, or it might have an, another name, but it allows students not only to see folks that may look like them that are in successful business practices somewhere or have pursued careers that might be outside the norm, but it also allows them to hear what some of the other students are feeling and, and in the presence of someone who is a professional that can help give them good advice. And sometimes I think that's what it takes is you just kind of want to be heard. You want someone to listen, but also you know, to know that someone else may be going through the same thing. Um, a shout out from um, Kristen for Summit Counseling Center. It's amazing. She says she's worked with them. Um, and Kim Cooper is asking, how many schools in Fulton County participate or have this program? Are there any in Cobb County? And I don't know the answer to that. I think Debbie mentioned that there are 47, 47. schools mm -hmm. across yeah. the state. And uh, I think the majority of them are in Fulton because Fulton is where it started, but I know that they're always looking to expand. And the beauty of this program is it doesn't just stop after, you know, the speaker comes in. Right. It doesn't stop at the end of the school year. It's something that can continue. And some clubs, I mean, some schools have, particularly at the high school level, I think have started Be The Voice clubs or uh, some other kind of, this is rolled into an a bullying club that may encompass other ideas as well, but Be The Voice has really initiated so many wonderful actions at the schools where it's where they're located. Yes, and I, I believe that you're right. We do have 47 programs um, in Georgia. It is constantly growing, um, always looking to open outside. Uh, Kristen is saying, what recommendations or resources do you have for children who are struggling with virtual learning, um, who are sad, depressed now because they can't see their friends or engage with them, um, especially the children who are too young for social media? Um, I feel this is a new environment and taking on a huge emotional toll on so many kids. Um, and yes, and that is something sometimes we don't address because everyone is um, everyone is just trying to deal with it. So what, uh, what advice or what would you say to that? I think it's important to make sure that if parents are concerned about their children, that they reach out to a professional, but that they also let their teachers know, let the students' teachers know, because the teachers miss the students as much as the students miss the teachers. And getting you know, maybe asking for an extra phone call from a parent to boost the child's um, ego or um, she mentioned that for children too young for social media i have five grandchildren Aww. one on the way to make some congratulations but all but my one-year-old 
understand about FaceTime because that's what we're doing with our, our children now. And there's nothing that says a three-year-old or four-year-old can't FaceTime with a friend. If their friend has access to social media and, and they're supervised by the parents, you know, a lot of times I think what they'll do is funny faces and run around and once they, once they see their friend on the, on the camera, they'll be there for a minute. And then they're like, oh, off doing something else, which is what right. Right. three and four-year-olds do. But it, it, I think just seeing another face is good. Taking pictures, having friends send pictures of their kids, drawing a picture and taking a photo of that to send to a friend that might be down. Um, here's an example too. And, and we've seen a lot of these on social media. My husband's birthday was this week and uh -huh. all three of our children live in town and we grew up here in Atlanta and we have lots of friends that are still here. So my daughter, organized a drive-by birthday party Aww. for my husband and uh people drove by with signs and honked their horns and maybe stopped across the street and talked for a few minutes so you know having having kids share their feelings with each other in a positive way you know i'm angry because i can't see you i'm sad because you're not with me um anything that it may seem like something little but to the person who's on the receiving end of that, it can mean so much. Absolutely. That's great advice. And sometimes I forget because my children are a little bit older. And so they, you know, just kind of deal with some of that on their own. So I don't know. But right. The little ones. I love my brother actually um, set up a Google Hangouts um, group for our family. So then the cousins can get together and do craft projects or just talk and stuff. And so you're right. It's that interaction that's so important because it won't, it doesn't allow them to just like internalize it. Um, Ed is saying, thank you for addressing this very important topic. Thank you for watching this morning. Um, and so yeah, I want to talk about for this program to work, um, what needs to happen? I think that it's off to an amazing start. It's it's kind of made being kind and compassionate and and um, being strong to step up. It's made that cool. So what do we need to do to keep going and just to build up the momentum? I think that schools that have the program should now, now that they've shared with their schoolmates, their classmates, they should try to think beyond that level, reaching out to friends at other schools that may not have the program. Yeah. Uh, they've got a great website. There is some expense involved, but many of the schools have been able to afford the program because they get community sponsors to help them. It's not an unreasonable expense, or they may do a fundraiser to help pay for it because there are materials that are used, but it's, this has been the most beneficial program I've seen for kids that it's just, and I think so much of it is it's empowering students to take charge of their own lives and understanding, not only understanding what's right and what's wrong, but understanding how to deal with something that's wrong and help turn it into something that's right. And that's a beautiful way to say it. Thank you so much for being a part of the Be The Voice family. We just love having you um, with us and supporting us because it, it does take all of us to work together. Um, as a parent, I love it. I love that not only is it being supported by the schools and the teachers and the administrators, but all the way up to the district. Um, so if there's anything that you know we can do to help, that's wonderful. And thank you for supporting us. Thank you for joining us today. And for everyone who tuned in, we appreciate you. Um, so I just want to say, Julia, what, you know, oh, we're getting some more comments, some hearts. Yes. So there's a lot of love um, this morning and we really need it right now. Uh, so what can we do as a community and parents to help the district help us put this um, program together and for it to be successful? Is there something that we should be doing? I think that parents can, again, share this information and how impactful it's been for your own children with your friends and neighbors. Um, there are a lot of good opportunities to share with folks that are not a part of the public school right. system right now. With your you know, uh, next door neighbor and some of the other large groups, I think they appreciate hearing how we're dealing with the crisis and what our students need and how they can be supportive. Things like uh, you know, setting up a I've seen it done with teddy bears, but it could be done with Be The Voice stickers in windows. Oh. Let kids walk through their neighborhoods looking for a scavenger hunt to see how many Be The Voice stickers they can see. 
Oh, I love that. I love that. So with Julia's challenge here, so if you have a Be The Voice sticker, you can make a Be The Voice sign. Um, if any of you have any of the Be The Voice shirts, I had asked um, Ed, who commented earlier, to send us some pictures because his children have the shirts. Definitely send it to us. We would love to see it. Thank you again. Yeah. Oh. Be The Voice could, could do a black and white pencil drawing or pen drawing, Ooh. put it on the website, kids copy it, and decorate it themselves and then display it. Well, look at this. We're hiring you, Julia. You're going to be our new marketing person. <laughs> Debbie, did you hear that? I love that idea. Okay, we're going to get on that because that's an easy, right? Yeah. So Absolutely. thank you so much. Yes, we're going to be on My that. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Stay home, be safe, be kind. Yeah, thank you. Be the voice. With that, we say goodbye. Thank you.